Okay, folks, it is time for another vlog style video of sorts and things. Today, well, hopefully this afternoon, we're going to be picking up a laptop meme, one that hopefully ought to be interesting enough. I mean, it's one that I'm replacing another machine with, so it's not really going to take up any more space. It's just going to be a replacement machine for another one that I've already got that's going to get dumped. The machine in question I'm going to be getting is an Acer Aspire laptop. It's nothing like this one right here. It's a different one entirely that's based on Sandy Bridge Intel, which is actually newer than the laptop that I currently have, which was a free machine from a friend Chris. It used to be his laptop from back in the day. Still have, hung, uh, still have hung on to it after all this time, but it doesn't really get much use anymore due to the fact it's got a broken screen and it's generally quite old. It's based on a uh, Penryn Pentium, uh, I think it was like a P6200 CPU. I can't remember exactly. It was either a P6100 or a P6200. I think it was the 6200. It's not really too fast by modern standards. It's compatible. It definitely is. It can still run most modern operating systems without a hitch. It's just old and slow. And I think the motherboard maxes out at four gigs of RAM or something. It'll boot with more, but then it becomes highly unstable. So I think its maximum is four gigabytes of RAM, which is kind of a shame for a machine from like 2011. So yeah, it kind of is what it is. So I'm going to replace it with a lovely Sandy Bridge machine based on a quad core i7 and going to hopefully make that a pretty decent replacement. It's not going to replace my E6430, which I just recently put an SSD into. You might've seen that video. But, eh, you know, it is what it is. So the reason why I'm making this a vlog style video is because I wanted to switch things up a little bit, kind of do like a miniature drive of the journey, although it's not really going to be anything crazy because I'm not going to like time lapse the whole thing because I don't have a mount in my truck, but maybe do like a couple of shots in between and whatnot of me picking up the computer and maybe doing some other stuff. But overall, this is just mainly going to be a filler as I don't really have content right now. And I'm also pretty busy as far as schoolwork goes, like very busy. I've got like this really intensive assignment that I've been working on that I'm trying to digest a bit. And it's really kind of throwing my head for a loop. So I haven't really had time to work on videos. So I'm hoping that this one will suit the needs of you all for at least a little while while I figure out what I'm going to do for my next set of videos. And uh, yeah. Another thing I've been up to lately is condensing what I own. So... As you can see, I've put a bunch of things back in the closet here. I've moved some things around. You might have noticed that there's this shelving unit here. That system's hopefully going to get sold. Obviously, the rack mount server is probably going to get parted out or sold as well. I haven't decided yet, but it's just taking up space. And then I put some other machines here in this other closet where the other storage unit was. So I just moved them both out here so I could make room for stuff because we had inspections lately. That was not fun. And I still have my Power Mac G5 quad out in my truck, which I'm going to hang on to that thing. I'm not selling that because that's almost too valuable to get rid of. But yeah, I definitely need to do a little bit of condensing down. So what I'm hoping to do is some more videos on some of these other computers. I haven't decided yet what, but that's the thing. It's like I haven't had a brain dump of ideas yet. So I don't know. There will be some machines that I'm hanging on to for sure, if anything, that Optiplex 790 small form factor down there, I'm going to probably hang on to because that's a portable-ish quad-core i7-2600 rig. Still pretty capable. Probably hang on to the Inspiron 530 because it's a Core 2 quad model. And the Q6600 still a decent CPU. And, of course, I got the computer for free, so I really can't complain too much there. Probably going to hang on to the HP Pavilion A250N because that machine holds some nostalgia for me. And it's been around for a long time and it's still kicking. So what the heck, I'll hang on to it for some XP projects or whatever have you. Even though the main XP machine is going to be the HP Pavilion A1477C down there, which I haven't booted up in a while. So maybe I can make a revisit video on that. If you're interested, let me know down below in the comments. Of course, I'm probably going to hang on to the $25 Optiplex 3010. This is a pretty sweet little system for the money and it performs very well. So definitely going to hang on to that. But there's some other machines that have gotten some quirks, mainly the Dell Studio XPS 7100, which unfortunately I don't really find very usable anymore because I believe the onboard ethernet has gone out. So in order to use this thing on the internet or any network for that matter, I have to use wireless. And that's not really a problem, but when you're talking about a desktop, it kind of can be. So it's a little bit more cumbersome and I can't exactly network boot this anymore. 
again, not a deal breaker, but it really kind of sucks because the whole point of a desktop is to be able to use uh, wired networking. And of course, throughout time, there are some machines I'm going to get rid of just because I simply don't need them. So for example, um, actually, let's start over here. So this other Power Mac G4, this was the first one I got here with the broken optical drive cover. That I'm probably going to get rid of because, well, yes, the other machine has scuffs on the case. At least it doesn't have a broken USB port and it's not missing that other optical drive cover. So this one's staying. That one's going to probably get sold. But what I'm going to probably do is I'm going to take the 120 gig IDE hard drive out of this and hang on to it because IDE hard drives in larger capacities are starting to become more scarce. And besides, it's like for the use case of this machine, I don't think you're going to need more than a 40 gig hard drive. Let's be fair. I mean, that's what that machine over there came with new. Then this HP Pavilion Slimline is going to get probably sold or parted out because of the messed up USB ports on the front. And the same thing goes for the Inspiron 1 2305, which is sitting up there. It's also got that busted USB port. I don't know if I'm going to even hang on to that computer either. Then the HP Pavilion 6630. As cool as it is, I've got a 6735, which is better than this machine in every way, and it's also in better condition. So I'm just going to probably let the 6630 go. Let's see if I can make money off of it. I don't know yet. The Presario 5441, I don't know about that machine either. Again, you know, I've already got an AMD-based set of machines that would probably be better than this. I know it's a K62 from 1999. It is cool, but, you know, what's the usefulness factor of it? Especially considering the fact that up here, I've got the 2266. So I don't really need to have a bunch of machines that are repetitive in nature. And then uh, probably going to flip that Acer Spire down there with the Athlon 64X2. And there's just a bunch of other machines that I'm just going to probably get rid of because I don't really need them. It depends on if I'm going to be able to make content on them or not. That's really the, old, the whole reason why I bought these machines is for content creation purposes. It's just I need to find ideas to make videos with them in the first place. Then there's some other machines in here that I'm probably going to pitch, like that Athlon XP system there, that Athlon 64 system there. Probably going to pitch, I don't know, that gateway there on the top because it's only got PCI, not AGP, which really sucks. And the list goes on. Again, I don't know about that uh, Inspiron 1 2305 up there. Uh, that's going to get pitched. This is going to get pitched down there. Probably that's the Presario 6708. Over there is the Desk Pro EN. That's probably going to stick around because that's a nice system. And then, of course, I got my rack mount servers down there, which have just been sitting idle forever, especially the Power Edge 2950 because it's so loud and it runs hot. But yeah, in the end, laptops are going to be a little bit easier to store, even though they're not nearly as powerful. I will hang on to some desktops, but the whole idea is just going to be that, you know, I have about six months left in this dorm room, and my Discord is currently blowing up on the watch, so sorry about that. But I have like about six months left in this dorm room, and so the point is that I did mention this inside of my New Year's special video that probably about around this time when I would start my next and final section of college, I'm going to stop with the meme buying because... Eventually, I'm going to have to move out of here. And trust me, time flies when you think about it. So I got to start playing it smart and find places to put stuff or get rid of stuff that I'm not going to need, which a large majority of the systems that I have here right now I don't need. So I'm just going to start flipping them and or, you know, recycling the parts out of them and getting rid of them because I don't really need to have a bunch of things in storage. Yes, I have a trailer for this, but I'm not going to, like, put all of my crap in there and then not have any places for them. And this isn't the majority of the stuff that I have. I still have stuff at home. And yeah, a large majority of it's Pentium 4. So <laughs> yeah, that doesn't exactly help. So I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with them and videos mainly. So I don't know. We'll see. That's just mainly why, you know, I've been doing like gaming videos and doing these things, random things here and there. Just because I'm just trying to make content with what I've already got because in the future, it's hopefully going to build up some money to make those machines worth buying and having stored and having to move around and all that fun stuff. So, I don't know. I'll think about some ideas. You all can probably find some creative things for me to do with them down below in the comments. I have taken some ideas, which I'm hoping to do eventually whenever I have the time. But time is the one thing I just don't have. So yes, content is coming. It's just going to probably take a while and not just software overview videos. And those are probably the easiest things to make. So I'd probably make a couple of those. But yeah, it's not everything. It's just stuff that actually is going to be good takes time. 
and I like to try to keep some kind of a consistency inside of my upload schedule. I mean, I've usually done like the one video every four days thing, but that's probably not going to be the case. If I'm lucky, maybe, but I can't guarantee much of anything. I've got, like I've shown before, I've got like some other things that, you know, I've been uploading. And not, again, not just software review videos, but anyways. And I've wanted to make videos with this thing too, the old T630 Thin Client, but my problem with this right now is that SSD prices are just through the roof. I've tried to look at M.2 SSDs for these, which this is all this thing takes as M.2 for storage, unless you use USB 3, and that's obviously a, a major downside. But trying to find something of a reasonable capacity in M.2 form is like almost $100 for me. Like, I'm not paying nearly $100 after sales tax for a 250 gig M.2 SSD if I want to keep one, you know, if I want to keep the you know, whole buying process local. That's just ridiculous. So the problem is just trying to find a reasonably priced M.2 SSD that hopefully isn't too wore out and or, you know, <laughs> yeah, dilemmas, first world problems. Absolutely. You betcha. I just try to keep things on the cheap because when you keep things on the cheap, then that just means that your operating costs are going to be low, which means your profit's going to be a little bit higher, which I don't really have much profits right now. So I have to keep things cheap. That's just how it works. So anyways, I'm probably going to pick this video back up when I leave which isn't gonna be until later today. I got like a couple hours to wait because apparently the person is not gonna be back home until later this evening, which I said was fine because, well, let's just face it. I don't wanna make the travel up there until he's gonna be available because it's almost a 40 minute drive one way. And you know, I'm running on a limited budget, so I don't wanna waste money on fuel unless I absolutely have to. So, you know, anyways. So like I said, I'm gonna meet you guys back up on the video here when I'm ready to leave, which for you all is gonna be instant thanks to the magic of video editing. All right, Neo, I'm back, and it is currently six o'clock. So why am I going out so late? Well, it's because the owner of this machine wasn't gonna get back to his house until like 7.30. So since it's roughly an hour drive up to his place, or his business rather, which I'll probably see if I can avoid putting on camera just for the sake of, I don't know if he wants it being filmed or not, and I don't wanna ask permission for it for the sake of a small YouTuber making a video here uh, yeah it's about an hour drive up there so uh, I'm gonna be leaving here pretty quick just so I can get up there early get on the highway just to make sure that I get over there because I don't know if there's gonna be traffic or anything like that so I'm over here at the grocery store I'm gonna go pick me up a couple of things to drink before I get on the road because I figure what the heck I might as well play it safe get me some beverages I don't know if I'm gonna get uh, anything specific. I'll just walk in and see what I can find, see if there's anything on sale potentially. So, yep, we'll go from there, get on the highway, make our way up the hill, and uh, go get that laptop. All right, I've made it to basically the place where I need to be. Still waiting on the original owners to show up. They're about an hour, not an hour, and a half an hour out. I can't English again clouds are rolling in we're gonna have some thunderstorms i'm sure but you gotta admit this view looks really freaking nice but yeah the rain clouds are gonna roll in so yep so i just had to pull off to the side of the road here so i could take a quick little break but hopefully they'll be back sooner rather than later i'm gonna send them a text and let them know that i'm here and i'll just be on the side of the road waiting on them to show up because I don't want to pull into their place and then if anybody's actually there, don't need them coming out and asking what the heck I'm doing on their property. Because that would not be real smart, so I don't know. Unless they tell me otherwise, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to park by the side and just wait on them to get back so that way, again, I'm not on their property. And then hopefully I get to see the machine and whatnot. It's about 7 o'clock, so... If they're going to be back about 7.35-ish, which that sounds about right given, you know, they're stuck in traffic and whatever, from wherever they're at, because they didn't tell me, of course, for obvious reasons. Um, yeah. And it should just be a matter of like, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes looking at the machine, giving them the cash, or maybe it's an immediate transaction. I honestly don't know. And then from there, I'm going to go back into the city, or maybe I'll just go straight back to my dorm. It honestly depends, but uh, we'll have to see. I've already ate, so, you know, I'm not really gonna need to go and get food, although, you know, it's whatever. So, 
yeah honestly at this point it's just a lot of waiting on the side here and just doing a whole lot of nothing so yep i will probably update you guys when i get the machine because like i said i don't want to film these people don't want to film their uh other stuff i'll just film when i actually get the machine that i came up here to buy in the first place all righty and the transaction is done dude was super cool and was uh able to let me check out everything about the machine so there be charger in the machine itself so now we're going to head out and i'm going to go find another place to go i don't know if it's going to be for the restroom or what the deal is or maybe i'll just drive straight back to my dorm honestly i can't tell you what but i did a live stream before i got the machine because why not let everybody you know have a little bit of a q a session with me for like 20 minutes even though i know it was very short Hopefully, maybe we'll do another one sometime. So I apologize that it was short, but the guy was just right there. So I had to stop streaming so I could go and meet him. You know how it goes. So, yeah, we'll see if I can make it back into the city here. And then uh, I'll pick back up the camera then, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But you'll get to see in an instant thanks to the magic of video editing. All right, so I've got this machine disinfected now with the old Clorox wipes over there. So now we can go ahead and take a look at this machine in all of its glory so it's obviously plastic this is sort of a mid-range ish high-end option of a laptop from back in 2011 and acer is known for using plastic i mean they still kind of did back in 2015 16 i guess it just depends on what you get but this was a sort of a mid-range high-end option doesn't have the discrete graphics i don't believe but that's okay and the reason why i know this is because i believe this charger is a 65 watt and obviously discrete uh, laptops with discrete GPUs normally come with a 90 watt or higher so yeah probably integrated in this case so taking a look at the machine it looks pretty good at first I'll show you the flaw in a bit in a, or, yeah in a bit because we're going to take a look at the stuff here real quick you might get an idea as to what's going on just based right here um, yeah so that's definitely a flaw and you can see the charger socket looks like it's brand new in there like it almost was never unplugged or whatever ethernet ginormous cooling vent for that i7 a VGA without the screws, HDMI, USB 2, a set of separate microphone and headphone jacks. That is actually really nice. That could come in handy in some use case in the future, maybe, potentially. Of course, we've got the multi-function card reader there, which supports SD cards, MMC cards, Memory Stick Pro, and XD, which is kind of a late addition to have XD on a machine this new. Then, obviously, on the right-hand side, we have a USB 2 port with a USB 3 port, which is really nice. A DVD burner drive there, and it's a Kensington security lock slot. And then on the bottom is just the battery, the Windows 7 key, that sort of stuff. I love that on the ad, this person thought it was manufactured in 2005. Well, obviously that's a big joke because the manufacturer date is from the 11th or the fifth week of 2011. I almost said 2005 as well in 11th week. Wow, that would have been smart, wouldn't have been. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, so the nice thing about these machines, these Acer 5000 series machines from around this era, everything except for like maybe the CPU and whatever is easily accessible from underneath these doors, including right there. So the RAM sits right here, the hard drive sits right here, and then obviously your battery kind of sits right here. And it comes out via this eject thing here, which I can't get it with one hand, but the idea is you stick a pin in there or something, you just, and then it pops the battery out. And I believe underneath here is just your wireless card. So overall, uh, cosmetically, the machine looks really good. I just think the issue is going to be underneath inside the casing, which you're about to see right now. So look at that. Mm -mm. So something tells me there's an issue with the hinge. And that probably explains why this casing is bulging up like it is. So camera microscope popping in there. Probably can't really see it too well. But yeah, something about that hinge doesn't look pretty. Fortunately, none of the plastic appears to be cracked at the moment. So that should be an easy fix. I'm not going to crack into it tonight. Ha, ah, see what I did there. But um, yeah. So let's go ahead and set this over here on my little nightstand. And we'll boot it up. Even though there's really nothing on this thing's hard drive, which I'm going to be swapping out anyway. Um, might as well give it a look at what it comes with here. So... I don't know if I mentioned the specs, but it's a Core i7-2630QM CPU at 2 gigahertz. It has 8 gigs of RAM. That'd be DDR3, obviously. And then the hard drive apparently failed in this machine. Now, I would guess that it was either a 750 gig or a 1 terabyte hard drive. 
that would have shipped in this machine when it was new. But obviously right now it's sitting with some piece of junk 60 gig drive in it. And despite my ugly mug, it actually has an operating system on it. And what's unfortunate is that it's running Vista business. It's activated, yes, but for some reason they decided to put Vista on this machine. I don't understand why. Like the only reason why they said that they put Vista on this machine was because of the fact that they couldn't install Windows 7 for some reason. I'm just like, how do you manage to not install Windows 7? That's really easy to do on a machine like this. But whatever, you know, he didn't seem too upset by that. And I told him, it's just like, oh, whatever. I'm going to put Windows 10 on this thing probably anyways. So it's not really going to bother me too much. But as you can see, there's the specs. There's no display driver, obviously, because they didn't bother to do even that. So, yep, 2630 QM at 2 gigahertz. And then, um, yeah, about all there is to say about this. Um, he does say the battery works, and it does. So let's see. What does Vista think? It says about 35 minutes. So definitely on the old side, but nothing I wouldn't expect for a machine of this age. It's probably on the original battery, come to think of it. It probably wouldn't be too far off of a claim. The keyboard does have a couple of quirks, too. Uh, mainly the couple of these keys are kind of a little topsy-turvy. You don't really tell at this angle, but, like, this 2 key is a bit oops. This O key is a bit oops. But it seems like all the rest of them are, for the most part, okay. Yeah, maybe a couple are jiggly, like the 6 key and the O key. Um, yeah, this thing's definitely had a lot of keyboard use. These Acers are known for having these keys pop off and break and crap like that all the time. So it doesn't really surprise me that this one suffers from that same fate. These keyboards are definitely known for that. And it definitely has some shiny spots on it. So yeah, we're gonna probably, if anything, I'll probably just replace this keyboard if I'm really that committed to doing it. I'll see if I can get these fixed, but you know, a replacement keyboard really isn't that much money. And it may just be worth doing it on a machine such as this, cause why not? But anyway, um, so we'll go into properties real quick. We'll take a look in here because why not? This does have Vista 64-bit on it, which I was actually kind of surprised by, but whatever. Um, yes, yeah, Service Pack 2, Vista Business, and obviously it was activated, but there's like basically no drivers on this thing, and I don't know what copy they were using, whatever account they're using, because obviously everything's being run as an administrator already. So yeah, you can definitely tell uh, this was not meant for Vista. It's meant for Windows 7. Wow, I wonder why. So, yeah, that's about it for this machine at the moment. I'm going to probably, like I said, stick a different hard drive in it, and we're going to potentially do some other things with this machine. Um, probably do a stability test within Windows 10 because that's what I'm going to put on this thing. And, uh, yeah, go from there. So there we have it. This Acer Aspire 5750-9292. And, yeah, that's about all I can really think of for this video. So thank you all for coming to watch. Catch you all in the next video. If you liked what you saw, thumbs up. If you didn't like it so much, thumbs down. And if you want to see more content just like this one, there will be a red button down below. And it says subscribe. I'd appreciate it if you click on it. But again, yeah, that's it for this video. See you all, uh, see you all later. Mm -hmm.